Uh, Friday, April 30th, Danicon 2, because it's not on May 4th, or you're wrong about that. We might do something on May 4th, too. But, uh, let's see, uh, we have newsy news stuff. Newsy news stuff, let's see what our news stuff was. Of course, you know we completed all Transformers mush. This is at Amicon, of course, and, uh, and uh, over the year, year and a half, year and a couple months. Yeah, new stuff. And uh, what would I be? Uh, what would I be on about here? Here's where, here's my choice for possible panels, some of which I'm not gonna do. Uh, here we have <laughs> Pixar stories. Andy's dad's tragic death. Andy the character. Uh, a crashing Halloween party. All Transformers must the cast review. Well, we sort of did that with the cast meet over there the other thing. Oh, well, we'll see if there's uh, some others that might show up later. No, I'm not doing that. Uh, Star Trek cameos, a possible Picard and crew, Discovery cameos, the Mandalorian cameo. Uh, Tacky warrior kid, was it Cal Cat? Yes. <laughs> um, Kitty Key used to be in a hobby. Oh, is that? All right. Um... Okay, uh, and deconstructing cult master, and yet uh, much people that know our adaptation is real. Uh, a lot of that doesn't make sense, so I'm not going to do that. But let's get on with the newsy news stuff. Toy Galaxy, two days ago, just informed us. Toy Galaxy, well, informed the whole internet, not just us personally. The internet, uh, that um, Harmony Gold and Studio New and Tatsuno Productions have reached an agreement after 35 years they have reached an agreement that they will distribute and allow distribution of Macross and Robotech in the US which means that they will release Macross 2 and Plus again they will release uh, Macross 7 that's never been released here you can only get that through Bandai and, uh, and DV, uh, DV Productions in uh, 1997 uh, that's the only place you could have gotten it uh, I have a copy of it. Uh, Macross Frontier, we have a bootleg of it somewhere. It's a really bad bootleg. It's on one disc. And I know it's like 24 episodes, so I know they crunched it really, really small. Uh, also, we have um, Macross Delta, which will ne which wasn't the... So all of those other versions might be released here. The spin-offs of Robotech. Well, the Macross version of Robotech. Also, that means that there will be a, a Sony movie, a Robotech movie. I'm not involved in it. So, don't, don't freak out. <laughs> uh, but I've done my fan films. And um, and Sony is okay with fan films. This is fine. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, clearly fan films with action figures that are G.I. Joe's, well, it's not their stuff. Even more fine with that. I mean, this Hasbro. G.I. Joe Robotech. They're Hasbro. You're, you're cool. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they might release toys and things like that. So. That's exciting Robotech news that we had hints of back in March, but couldn't affirm the official affirmation until April, uh, two days ago. So, now, yeah, Robotech and Macross are back, and they'll have to equate the Rick Hunter thing. They, they, they can feel free to use the end of the circle and Transtech as inspiration if they want, and just, and just bring Rick Hunter home and have the Transformers or not. <laughs> or they could just say that he's not lost. Or reboot it entirely. Just set it. Mark's cards uh, made the suggestion. Set it 200 years later or something. Because it would almost have to be. Uh, like they did with Star Wars. Um, uh, he didn't suggest it to them. He suggested it to me. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So. There's some news. Robotech news. Uh, and uh, in, in, I guess it's. Either, I'm not sure if it's May or July. I think it's actually July when Kingdom comes out. We'll let you know. <laughs> uh, you'll know when uh, Netflix Kingdom comes out. War for Cybertron comes up. What else is that? Demogon. This is. What was that other thing that you wanted to do? The. Um, let's see. Wolf. Yeah, Kitty Key thing. Uh, instead of doing a Kitty Key COL thing, that's a little strange. Um, not yet. If we do it. Um, I was working on the on-location journals. Now, I kind of made it sound like, to Mark's hearts, that there was literally, like, 
minutes of publication. They were, they were gonna release it all to the world, all of our location. Ah, I, I, I pitched it really, really hard. Turns out, uh, pitched it a little too hard because it's really what I was gonna do. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, there's a lot of on location that actually would require a lot of name changes anyway and he mentioned that kind of got paranoid freaked out about like well Jamie Messi and Adam Salinger those characters will they find out about on location even though they would have not not only would they not remember us they certainly wouldn't have any clue as to reading anything by us but yeah um, so there's that. Um, but still, I spell. So. So. Mm hmm. Candy. Yeah, I'll put them. Um, so. No. Uh, when I was putting up the, um, uh, I got into the pagination of undergrads at this point. Not not MTV's undergrads, on location undergrads. There's a difference. Yeah, where ours was first. Back in the 90s. Then there came later. Um, it had nothing to do with it. Just happened to be a similar name. I was an undergrad. Yeah, now we're undergrads. Um, and now there are several possibilities with an on location type script. The most intriguing of which is to kind of use the uh, suggestion, suggestion formula that uh, that we're going to do with Discovery, because I mentioned that earlier. So the Brian Fuller's original idea for Discovery was that Mirror Universe, you discover the whole thing is a Mirror Universe. The end is like, oh, it's a Mirror Universe. I mean, I kind of hinted at that. And you can't do that here. But in the Zillion space, they do have a Mirror Universe where things are happening differently. And it's conceivable there could be a crossover there. Uh, there's any number of possibilities with silly in space because they're already established characters. So if you were going to make changing names in an on-location type of story, we call it Starship Locations, obviously. And then you would just say Starship Locations, Pine Hill and Evergreen and Tennessee State, respectively. And Jung Swan would be Marshall Sportist and uh, it just change the names and <clears throat> establish the origins of people. And because it could be a slightly altered timeline, you could have even the McKinleys be in it and Clarence could be alive. You could have it be another, you know, another timeline where things didn't happen the same way as they did on on the Capterra planet or the Endover planet or the other ones. It was it was a different a different timeline. Things happened differently as a result of Starship locations being released. So it's a snake eating its own head. <laughs> it would be a paradox. See. <laughs> kind of what we're getting at. <clears throat> or they could not. There's something else. <clears throat> and also, also the diary elements wouldn't be in there anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it wouldn't be like you're releasing your diary. Right? It was the journal part, the journalism part, not the diary part. You know, the whole... There. Uh, so, yeah, as Mark Cards pointed out during the during the Evergreen years at the Flyer, when he read some of it, he was all like, I didn't say this, and Henry never said this, and other people have said, men in the magazine. And, yeah, there was, uh, there was embellishment in some cases. But actually, that tape recording thing was transcript from the tape, so he just didn't remember that he said that. He totally did. What what the thing that he said <laughs> about Chris and Henry and all that? That was on the tape. He said it. <laughs> uh, but but he was all well, actually that was Henry that said that, and I said this other thing, and Henry said this thing about Chris, and and, and then I said no, I don't think that's that that. No. So yeah, uh, so undergrads tried to make the uh, the quotes right, so there weren't as many. And. Then they tried to, we tried to do many revisions of on location over the years. Uh, there was a 92 version, and then there was a 96, 95, 96 version, 97 version, where we had to get 
where we got a hold of uh, computers to make it possible to go from that old Apple II to a G to a GS and go from the GS to to Mac, uh, to Power Mac and convert the Power Mac discs to the readable little smaller discs uh, that were available with a Mac convert onto a laptop. A laptop back then, a Windows 97, Word 97 laptop, or Works 97, depending on which one. Works was basically Apple Works, and, and Word was, yeah, Microsoft Word, the early Microsoft Word laptop. So we were able to convert with Mac Convert and convert the uh, the, the files. Uh, it took uh, a year, roughly. Uh, there were some that were missing and some that were found. And fortunately, they're all in that archive. Although, strangely enough, the archive was missing about a year of the... Um, of mainly mainly the uh, freshman year was, was missing from high school. Uh, um, we had to go back and find that off the Apple Talk stuff that was in the... that was saved in the drives and it was text format. So I went back there and found it, pulled it out, put it back in. Uh, and then it was in another version, as it turns out. <coughs> another version, as it turns out, anyway. So, yeah, it was fine. It was there somewhere. It just wasn't in the master. It was in the copy. So, uh, so what you could do is a lot of the quotes that we're not sure about, those quotes can be taken out. They still have the phrase in there, but the quote taken out. So you'd be like, like, in, like, Angie says this about such and such when quotes, and you just take that out. So it says Angie said this such and such. So then it's paraphrased. And then you're saying, well, Angie didn't necessarily say it like that. She said it paraphrased. Well, she may have not said it like that. That way you can get away with saying some stuff. You can just say, oh, that was paraphrased. So it's not scandalous because it's paraphrased. Oh uh, yeah, but, yeah, he was a little paranoid about the. Jamie, uh, maybe he encountered Jamie since then. It's where Jamie might find out about where he is. I wouldn't think so because, I mean, technically, because like those other journals before them, uh, Cal Cat is not something Jamie would know. Cal Cat was something between his cards and I and whatever. And, and in order to make the connection, he would have to scroll through all of Cillian space and all the other stories that I've written and make the connection that Cal Cat is me which would which he could make if he was really bright and clever then he could say like ah oh, I figured it out but we're talking about a you know, bully character from the from the 80s who wasn't all particularly clever necessarily um, so, but, but did have elabor elaborate ways of making up fibs. <laughs> but yeah, um, suffice it to say, I don't think he'd figure it out. Uh, uh, however, the creepers that we encountered over the years, they probably shouldn't really be mentioned that they're creepers. So they should be like, uh, dumb that down or change the last names. And it just so happens a lot of the COL people, the Jung Swan people did change their names several times. So they could just, you know, just change the name again. Um, yeah, and when we did Silly in Space, we cut out about 100 people of each cast and just didn't include them. This one would be more thoroughly including all the casts together, and it would be more of the history as though this universe had more of the whole story of Starship locations. The story has more of it because they, they were able to find a version of it. Maybe this version of them is discovered pristine on a, on a mission in space. and Maybe maybe it's in the future. Maybe it's 31st century. This discotheque discovers this pristine Cillian planet that was left over that I forgot about. And it's just sitting out there. Uh, it could be a Strange New Worlds thing. It could be set in 2360 or so. 2260, way back. And it could be like, oh, we're going to explore the time of... of Kirk across with Pike and do that. Could do that. Uh, I could do it during Next Generation and say it's the time of Picard. It's probably going to be Picard. Time of Picard. They find the, the ship. Um, but, but but obviously it wouldn't be the same stuff. So it would be so it would be as if as if like the crew encounter it. It would be fictionalized at that point, unless it's fictional adventures on a planet. Sounds very convoluted. But yeah. Um, 
But the idea that we have to completely avoid someone being libeled or slandered is a little off because they're not going to recognize us. No, no, they're not. Um, we wouldn't do it anyway, but they wouldn't recognize us. The only reason back in the day, in 2012 or so, 2014, the job club people at the one job club place recognized it is they hacked the websites of all the former students that were looking for them. And they hacked, they opened the private uh, things of on location and looked at them. Um, and, oh, there's the thing about the job club in there, which they shouldn't have done because they technically hacked it. Um, that, that's, uh, yeah, they did that. Um, at this place. I'm not going to say the name. <laughs> and they, they had access to that, that on location. Uh, that version of it. Um, I don't know how they were able to comb through it, except that I guess the name of the place was mentioned, and they were able to backtrack through that. But in this case, in order for them to know even Pine Hill, which is a very generic term, they would have to backtrack through that. And it, genuinely, students that graduated from Pine Hill or left Pine Hill wouldn't care. They didn't like it there, so most of them, so. <laughs> they would be all like, uh, yeah. And then you could take the bobblehead characters and put them in on location episodes if you wanted to. You know, highly stylized, highly fictionalized if you wanted to. You could do that. Or something like that. Uh, yeah, then it could be fictionalized. Uh, you could do all kinds of things with the, with this information. So I'm thinking that, that, that I would put together the journals for private use, the journals updated to 2021. And then if the Sillians people want to get a hold of the whole journal series and take a version of it and make their a Silly Trek uh, spin-off out of it, because it would be a whole spin-off. There's like six of them. Don't include working class with the job. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't include it. No, I'll leave that. We already kind of went there. So include just bits of it, I guess. But yeah, there's bits of that stuff we don't want. Uh, however, you can include COL. You can with that. <laughs> uh, because a lot of that was uh, the, the, the Bullshito Jacob Hunter files where we covered them in, in directly through uh, well directly through uh, the uh, on location through the uh, Silly Trek years by setting it on the Silly Trek planets Capterra and Key Draconis and Silly and Earth and having it be well they're in space on the planet it's not really Jung Swan, it's Marshall Sportiest, and really what's going on is really these other planets that they went to flow die as well. So yeah, it's a, a flotter endocrine system. Yeah, so... <laughs> anyway, so... That's my take on it thus far. That the, the, the publishable version would be the silly version with the, with the head, but head people. <laughs> Or it would be the Star Trek Starship Locations version, or both. And you would get it so... The names would be changed. It would be so different that there would be no... No possibility of them at least looking at it going like, well, if they figured it out as Pine Hill, it would be like, well, it's obviously a cartoonized like version of it, or it's a space version of it. It's like, it's not us, it's some other version of it. Somebody else did and yeah, Kitty Key could, his origins could be in there. The other people's origins could be in there. <laughs> uh, none of that stuff could all, all be in there. It's not, but it could be. Uh, or is it? <laughs> um, I wouldn't add too much or embellish too much on it, though. But I would change out some of the dialogue that seems a little like they wouldn't say it. Uh, and a lot of the dialogue in the uh, Pine Hill years was all based on like a conversation that was going on or is probably didn't happen quite like that and the story is all conversation that, that little off so you can take some of the quotes out and just say paraphrase 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 they really didn't say that i did but everyone else didn't um <laughs> so oh and making it seem more like the later stuff uh, so it would be more like a an anthology exploration of well, roughly 25 years of uh, of that series. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Anyway, so, thanks.